Thanks very much, uh, here, look. Uh, Mr Lynch, first of all, just on governance. How did you allow one man and his agent become bigger than RTE? Because one man who was refusing to take a pay cut in the real sense and to appease him, RTE ran off to find someone who would pay him and then pretend to everyone that he was taking a pay cut while secretly making up to him, channeling money from a sponsorship deal. And as a result of this, this man and his agent being bigger than RTE through the side deal have now jeopardised the reputation, the integrity and the trust with the public. Was he worth it? Just to answer that, I mean, firstly, just to say I'd like to apologise on behalf of the exec board for what is a clear breach of corporate governance for lack of uh, transparency. I think when you go to the substantive issue of what has occurred here, um, and I have looked at this over the last seven days, the chair has asked me to stand up and be the deputy director general. Uh, in terms of this particular arrangement, commercial deal, the guarantee and the underwriting of it is absolutely critical. So on May the 7th, 2020, um, a guarantee was verbally given uh, in relation to the fact that um, if the sponsor uh, fell out, that RTE would pay Ryan Tuberty. And that is the sort of significant thing at the center of this. In that instance, and when that did occur, RTE should have declared Ryan Tuberty's earnings. Okay. On that, because the statement says that you were aware of elements of the deal. Now, regardless of what bits you knew, the bottom line is that you and others knew that there was a deal. And so you knew in reality that Ryan Tuberty was being compensated for the pay cut that he wasn't taking. Now, it may have been legal, but do you not think that at the time that was against the spirit of things, when everyone else was taking a pay cut within the organisation, do you not think that, that was sly, deceitful, fundamentally dishonest of RT management? Were you okay with that? And why did you or others who had elements of knowledge of the deal, why did you not bring that to the attention of the board? Yeah, so in terms of this deal, uh, what I was aware of in early 2020, so in my role as Director of Audience Channels and Marketing, <coughs> I would be responsible for the number of hours that Ryan Tuberty does on television. So any query that would come to me would be in relation to how many broadcast hours as it applies to his contract. In this particular conversation, um, in this particular situation, should I say, there was a suggestion that Ryan Turbury could do less hours and that there was an off-air time of about 11.30. In terms of what I was aware of in relation to the commercial agreement was that there were to be three events subject to finding a commercial sponsor, obviously, um, because there had to be a relationship between Ryan Turbury and the commercial sponsor. So if that relationship uh, didn't occur, then Ryan Turbury would not be paid money from the commercial sponsor. And in respect of that deal, because we've seen then other payments in respect of the hosting of these public events, were, yeah. were you aware of this as well in terms of the full, the, the full aspects of it? No. And nobody was aware of that other than the DG? Um, um, I had absolutely no awareness of how this deal was operationalised in terms of uh, where it was paid from um, or the relationship with the client. No. Given the fact that we don't have D Forbes be before us and we don't know whether we ever will, and the statement from yourselves yesterday stated that the construct of the deal, as, as, as Ms O'Leary has said, was, was, was with her. Can we yeah. see, can we have a scenario where documents pertaining to this deal are going to be published so that the public can have full transparency in respect of it? Yeah, I think one thing you need to remember in terms of this is that the, when we discussed the construction of the deal, what happened here was it comes back to the underwriting of this uh, arrangement, because RTE should never underwrite a commercial agreement and uh, in relation to a talent to say that they will pay out of public funds <coughs> to that talent. So that is what then led to incorrect figures <coughs> being published, completely lacking in transparency and a complete breach of corporate governance. Okay, why were the payments to Mr. Tuberty um, anonymised 
as consultancy fees uh, in the barter account, and is, is that a breach of accountancy rules? I've looked at the Grant Thornton um, investigation into these payments, <coughs> and um, uh, within that, it's not identified uh, who um, initiated this idea of consult consultancy services. That's not uh, clear or identified. Okay, well, let's, let's get down to the influence of third-party agents in RTE and the construction of deals, because the, the influence of one man who seems to have had more power than anyone else at the negotiating table, uh, the real DG, as he was nicknamed. On the 19th of December 2019, we have for the first time the references to the facilitation of this tripartite deal. 19th of December, so Santi comes six days early for the boys. Why were RTE so afraid of a presenter and his agent? And had you seen evidence of a higher offer? Was there someone else in this small Irish media market promising to pay him over a half a million euro? That one man was able to command effectively pay increases when everyone else was taking a decrease. Yeah, so I never, I wasn't involved in these negotiations. So I was aware of the sum of money um, if a commercial partner could be found. Okay, but my question is, in terms of the influence of third-party agents within RTE, the ordinary rank and file, when I saw the journalists that were assembled yesterday on, on the steps of Montrose, reporters, researchers, who spoke, yeah. spoke about freelancers, who wouldn't be even on a fraction of what the top-up money that this man was on, I'm on about the influence of agents that can, can negotiate deals in a, in a tiny Irish media market yeah. worth in excess of half a million. Yeah, I think, again, when you look at, and I've reviewed some of the correspondence around this, uh, the agent was particularly focused on getting a guarantee, uh, which uh, <coughs> there is no record that, outside of the verbal agreement, that this was provided, and the legal position was it shouldn't be provided. Is there a, is there a monopoly there with, with, with Mr Kelly? in terms of negotiating deals involving taxpayers' money? Is there any, in terms of the, the impact of this within RTE? Uh, again, I would say, I mean, you know, each, each uh, person who's represented by Mr. Kelly has a right, you know, to represent uh, representation, if they so wish. So, as an agent, he is going to uh, derive the best bargain he can get for his clients. The RTE statement yesterday is, obviously based on a trail of documents over the last few months on documents and emails that were discoverable. But can you guarantee me, Mr Lynch, that you were never part of a conversation, a verbal exchange, a chat in the corridor <coughs> with D Forbes or others regarding this side deal that allowed Ryan Tuberty's sponsorship deal be underwritten by RTE? 100%. And in terms of those, because obviously you have stated that it was a verbal arrangement, have you made inquiries? Because obviously the suspension of D Forbes last week has, has uh, removed one person from that process. Yeah, correct. Uh, Shuman, may I ask you, in respect of the suspension of D Forbes, did you have a conversation with her before that suspension? Um. Yeah, of course. Okay, and so in terms of setting out to her why she was being suspended, can you tell me what you said to her in that respect? Well, a letter, a formal letter went out to her. Indeed. From... You can appreciate that the suspension of that person has removed the one witness as well, effectively, from, uh, um, from this process and trying to find out what has happened, because the RT statement yesterday is obviously squarely putting the blame on one person. Well, actually, the suspension was whilst... Um, a disciplinary procedure was happening. So it, it, it's, it's the resignation that puts her outside of this. So the, there was a process in train up until the point of her resignation on Monday. There was a process in train where it was put to her what was wrong here, and the process was, had started in relation to engaging we had set up a third party intermediary um, to run that. We had set up also a subcommittee of the board specifically to deal with, with this uh, disciplinary procedure. 
Okay, uh, Mr Lynch, um, this morning uh, we heard that Ryan Tuberty is out of contract, something which he has actually since uh, rejected, uh, and that new contract negotiations are now paused. Um, is Ryan Tuberty going to be back on the air in RTE? Um, at the moment, obviously, for editorial reasons, uh, it's impossible for Ryan Tuberty to be back on air. And do you envisage him coming back on air? Uh, in the long term? Again, I would just say for editorial reasons, uh, he is not on air at the moment. Okay. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you, uh, Senator Cass. Sen